In this video, I'm going to be talking about the modern periodic table. The modern periodic table. And in my last video, I talked about the Mendelevian periodic table, which I have here. Basically, the periodic table which Mendeleev created. And this periodic table basically showed the relationship between different elements. So it showed them in these columns and these rows. And it had some predictions of elements to be discovered. And I think one of the reasons why um, Dmitry Mendeleev got this inkling that there's probably going to be new elements to be discovered that filled it, to the, fill those places is around the time of Dmitry Mendeleev, new elements were being discovered at the rate of around like one element per year. So every single year it was like at least one element one new element was being discovered so so you from that he probably got a kind of um indication that you know there's probably going to be more discovered but i i, I don't know i wasn't there with mendeleev sitting there as he wrote his periodic table and now moving on from that as if we move forward in time from 1969 when he published this table if we move forward now to the time, a um, couple of years after, about around seven years after Mendeleev had unfortunately passed away in 1914, but Mendeleev died in around 1990, like 1907. So this is like seven years later. A man, this man whose name was Henry Moseley, Henry Moseley, This man basically transformed the periodic table in a sense that the technology which was available at the time of Henry Moseley permitted him to be able to actually find out the number of protons in an atom of an element. And this meant that he could actually reshape the way the periodic table is ordered. And by that I mean that rather than having the, the rather than having these elements ordered in terms of atomic um, mass in, in terms of atomic mass mass what he could do is basically get rid of this ordering system and actually have the elements ordered in terms of atomic number and you may also know the atomic number as being the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom or of, of an element and that's basically what it is. And what this does is it actually sorts out nearly all of the anomalies which exist existed in Mendeleev's periodic table. Because he got some of the orders of stuff incorrectly because the 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 relative atomic masses which were calculated at that time didn't correspond with the properties which the the different um elements had. And I think one of the reasons why behind this was the fact that they didn't know about protons and neutrons uh, during the time of Mendeleev. But anyway, moving on, in 1914, when Henry Moseley basically uh, changed the way it was ordered, we got this more modern version of the periodic table. It's pretty much, very much this model which we have here, maybe minus a few undiscovered elements at that time. But yeah, it was a very, very big step forward in chemistry. Because now we had a, a, a periodic table which really did show the trends very well. Anyway, if you go back to Henry Moseley. Where the hell is the picture of Mr. Glenn Seaborg? I had a picture of Glenn Seaborg here, but it seems to have disappeared. Okay, okay, the picture of Glenn Seaborg is not here. I will just draw a picture of him. I'm joking. I'm not going to draw a picture of him. Um, okay, I'll draw a smiley face. And if you want, you can go on Google and you can, you can, you know, search for Glenn Seaborg. Glenn Seaborg. If you want to, you know, see a picture of the guy. I don't know why my picture went. I think, I think I pressed Control Z too many times. Um, yeah, let's draw some hair, hair on his head and some eyes. Bigger smile. Anyway, so Glenn, what Glenn Seaborg did is he made a bit of a contribution to chemistry. He was one of the guys involved in the Manhattan Project. But yeah, one of the things that Glenn Seaborg did was that he actually figured out, um, he suggested a, a, um, a place, a way that he, he suggested the way that the F block elements fit into the periodic table. 
and the f block elements are basically these elements which in our modern periodic table are, are, are placed separate so these here are the f block elements of the periodic table and he basically suggested the way how they fit into the general the grand scheme of the whole periodic table which was a quite a good step forward in chemistry so now if we just look at some of the basics of our periodic table you guys probably um, have a quite a good idea of this but I'm just going to go into it a little bit so in our modern periodic table what we have is that we have groups and we have periods and so groups are the um, the, the vertical columns right and we have numbers here on this periodic table to indicate the different groups so we have group one for with, with the alkali metals we have group two and we have the basically this row we, we tend to call it the alkaline earth metals let me just write the names on there we have the alkali metals alkali metals here we have in group two the alkaline alkaline earth metals and as we go forward what we have here we have the group three group three group four group five group six group seven and we have group zero which has the noble gases in it now hydrogen has properties which are similar to the group one elements and they're also similar to the group seven elements so it's just mainly just sitting there in its own well on its own independent island we don't really put it into a group but sometimes it is it's, it's, it's seen as a group one element because of some of its properties but yeah i won't i won't really go into that because sometimes it's seen as a group seven element and yeah, yeah. anyway so if we look at the horizontal rows which we have in this periodic table so these rows we call these periods periods so these are groups the, the vertical lines are groups and the horizontal ro um, rows are periods so we have period one up here helium period two period three period four and hydrogen's in period one by the way and period four five well one two three four five yeah five anyway so yeah periods of the horizontal rows and yeah that's all i really wanted to talk about in this video so um in the next video i'll be going into the different blocks and electron configurations as they correspond to the different blocks and so yeah i hope you guys found this video helpful and i'll see you guys in the next video see ya